Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome to the shop. In this video, I'm going to be unboxing and setting up my saw stop table saw. However, this is not the actual unboxing setup and first thoughts video on the saw stop. This is more of a behind the scenes on me filming that video. So it's kind of like video inception, a video within a video and other things that won't be in the actual video, which should hopefully be coming out in the next few weeks after I post this video. However, it's the holidays, so no promises. Also, I will share some of my thoughts on why I went with the saw stop and why I made this upgrade now instead of further down the road. I've only had my current table saw for about a year and a half and it was not an expected upgrade. I was actually looking to get a 14 inch bandsaw first, but I decided to go with a new table saw. So stick around and hang out with me in the shop. Also, something awesome happened and I did not expect it and that is my channel hit 1,000 subscribers. And I just wanna say from the bottom of my bacon filled heart, thank you so much for supporting this channel and following along with me on this woodworking journey. I don't know where this is going, but I'm excited to have you along with me and I hope I can continue to just at least provide some entertainment for you. If you can learn something, that's awesome. I am not an expert as I've said before and I am learning, but maybe that'll inspire others to do the same. Again, thank you. So why did I get a saw stop? Well, fear. All right, I'm gonna give you some insights into myself, Daver, and share some irrational fears that I have. Number one, filling up tires. I'll do it, but since my dad told me at the age of 16 that if you overinflate your tires, they could blow off the rim and kill you instantly, I've been a little apprehensive filling up my tires. Number two, falling down the middle of a stairwell in an office building. Have you ever been in a stairwell in a really tall office building and looked down the middle. Well, I know it's very, very narrow, but I always get super dizzy and get some vertigo when I do that. I'm afraid that somehow I'm gonna flip over the railing and fall right in between that all the way down to my death. Likely won't happen, but you never know. Number three, passing out at a table saw. And this is another reason why I decided to purchase a saw stop. You see a lot of tests with the hot dog simulating fingers or a hand, but my biggest fear is if something were to happen when you're on the table saw and you pass out, you could fall face first into that saw. And my hope is that the flesh sensing technology will activate just like it would with a limb or anything else on your body. This is one of the reasons why I went and got a saw stop table saw. And just to finish out the list for fun, number four, being wrongfully accused of a crime. This actually happened recently and I posted on my Instagram and TikTok about this. It was related to woodworking. Long story short, someone stole a photo off of Instagram of me, created a fake profile on Facebook Marketplace, stole another woodworker's photos off their Etsy shop, and then scammed somebody uh, and using my face. Luckily, I found out about it. I think it's taken care of. And that leads us to the number five irrational fear, which is being mistaken by an assassin or ninjas. I don't want to find myself in the middle of a target uh, being chased down by someone who is like Jason Bourne because they thought I was someone I was not and then I have to go on the run and all sorts of adventures would take place. I really don't want to have to do that. Obviously, if it happened, you have no choice. Um, however, I'm always making sure I'm not mistaken. <laughs> that was dumb. Without a doubt, the safety feature is number one. From what everybody says, the table saw is the most dangerous tool in the shop. And after my kickback accident in the summer, the table saw has made me the most nervous to use. I was very fortunate to only get a bruising in my gut. Now I will say that accident could have been completely avoided if I knew what the hell I was doing. So very, very tough lesson learned. However, I am grateful that it wasn't worse. Number two is that I heard that there are really great things about this saw. I 
I have a small shop and the size of this saw is very nice for the space that it will be in. But another big factor was the price. This is the cheapest saw stop. And I know you can't really put a price on the safety feature. However, my bank account would disagree with you. So I went with this one because this is what I could afford at the time. And the money that I had been saving up was for a 14 inch bandsaw, but I figured that money was best spent on the peace of mind, the safety feature, but also this has got really great reviews and it's supposed to be a fantastic saw. However, you know, when I test it out, I'll be able to uh, hopefully confirm that. Another reason was that I listen to the Modern Maker podcast and every week they are doing an ad for saw stop table saws. And that also kind of got into my head in addition to really tragic accidents that I had heard about from people secondhand that knew somebody or had a relative that had a table saw accident and kickback accidents that actually pulled people's hands into the blade. I could go on and on, but I'm glad I went with it. Let's get this bad boy open. This is gonna be, oh shit. It says, welcome to Soft Stop and Safer Woodworking. Let's get started. Owner's manual. This is a very beefy owner's manual. Good job, saw stop. God, one of these staples got me. Oh, I gotta change the blade out. There we go. Don't be gentle with it. It's a saw, it's not pottery. All right, so now I can put these wheels on. Without clipping my fingers on these staples. Cool. Ugh. Very awkward. Now I have more room. I should also mention that along with the saw stop, I got an extra brake just in case something happens and I were to activate the brake and need to change it out so I can continue working. I figured, hey, I was spending all the money I had at the moment, what's 80 more dollars? Glad I got it. I also have extra blades just in case. Hopefully I won't activate it, but Semper Paratus. Some very ominous steps that it's asking me to take. I will do that so I don't break the saw. Okay. Pretty simple. Remove the red tape. Shit. <laughs> Should probably show this. What do you think, everybody? Yay, show this part. All right, so one of the last things was removing the shipping pin from the back of the saw and it was super simple to set up. I mean, I can't tell you how easy this was. I mean, pretty much out of the box, it was set up. Obviously, there's some other things I need to do, like test cuts, but it's really late tonight, so I'm probably not gonna do that because I'm a good neighbor. Like State Farm, I'm there to not make table saw noise at 12 o'clock at night. Oh, that is so nice. 
So that's all I'm pretty much gonna show. I will say that I was checking everything and one side is nice and flat and then this side right about here, it is not. It's a little worrying so I may have to call saw stop to see what they say. I, I need this saw right now to do some work but I guess I have my old table saw. Good thing I didn't sell it yet. Stay tuned. Let's get this. So it's the next night and I just wanted to provide an update on the table bed. I reached out to SawStop and I have to say that their customer support was lightning quick in getting back to me. It turns out that maybe I'm just a perfectionist, but it is within the allowed tolerance according to them. And they said that the measurement that I took is pretty good for this table saw. I feel a lot better. Again, being kind of green to woodworking overall, I guess relatively green to woodworking. Um, I'm learning so much. I'm learning about tolerances and using feeler gauges and all sorts of things to make sure that my table saw is safe and accurate. I really just assume that all table saw beds were flat. Now this is powder coated aluminum from what I believe. It's not cast iron so of course there's going to be some possible issues and I had read online that there were some issues with the table saw beds not being completely flat. However it is only in one section of the table saw on the far right side towards the middle and it is very very uh, minimal. You would think that it should be dead flat, but again, this isn't cast iron. You get what you pay for, I guess, even though this was twice the amount of my previous saw, which is dead flat. I guess I'll have to actually use the saw to make sure everything measures up. I hope you got something out of this video. If anything, you probably learned something uh, new about me today and you may subscribe or unsubscribe. Hopefully you stay with me. <laughs> I appreciate you checking out this video and stay tuned for my unboxing setup and first thoughts video on this job saw. Man, I keep saying job saw on this saw stop job site saw pro. Again, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. If you haven't, please go ahead, hit subscribe, hit that notification bell if you wanna be alerted to any new videos that I have. And until next year, thanks for watching and take care.